uh, as of now we discussed about how we can design the combinational logic circuit and what are the basic combination logic circuits and uh, like half header full header half subtractor full subtractor other things but the problem is suppose i have to design any function okay and in that function what i have to do i have to design that function based on the uh, basic gates whatever basic gate or the whatever the gates we have like we discuss seven kind of gate uh, three basic gates two universal gate and two exclusive gates okay so whatever the designing part we did in the uh, previous classes or the previous lectures we uh, usually consider those gates to implement the function but what happens if i have to implement a bigger circuitry okay so in that case if i am considering this is small uh, logic gate logical gate to implement those for those functions so might be the number of gate requirement will be very high okay so to overcome that problem we need to go with the median scale integration mi msi need, need to be considered msi means what happens uh, you will have a module and you can utilize those module for a particular applications let me repeat it again what i'm saying if you can recall the four bit binary adder okay in the four bit binary adder what we did binary parallel adder if you see uh, the inside block of four bit binary adder we have a different half adder and full adder and some logical gates okay so if i want to make the binary parallel adder with the help of logical gate then first i need to design the half adder then i have to design the full adder then i have to interconnect based on our requirement to make the four bit pa parallel adder and then the circuit will become very complex so to overcome that problem what we did we uh, combine all these things and we got to know once once uh, one uh, ic is available that can perform the four bit binary adder okay so so if we have ready four bit binary adder so without knowing the the details of inside the module we can utilize those ics for the binary addition okay so this kind of things we can call them the medium scale integration what we integrated we have integrated some half adder some full adder and some logical gate and that can be utilized as a, a four bit binary adder okay so the same kind of things we will extend uh, in this particular lecture okay so the data processing circuits are similarly just like that what we are utilizing here we will utilize some of like we will try to reduce the complexity by using a single kind of circuit not the detailed circuit we will consider that block as a black box okay we will not go inside that block like suppose if we discuss the four bit parallel adder so the four bit parallel adder will just consider the uh, four bit parallel parallel error ic but i will not consider what is the inside that ic i know that four bit parallel id have four inputs uh, 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 two set of four input four bit inputs one carry input one carry output and four bit of the uh, sum output okay so these are the input and output combination and then whatever the input and out, uh, input uh, i will give accordingly i will get the output okay but i am not interested in what is the inside uh, of that module so similarly we will uh, see here as well suppose i have a data and i have to process some of the data uh, so in that case i will not be interested what is the inside of that that module but i will be interested how that module is working okay so uh, in this particular lecture we will be considering how we can design a different kind of circuitry that can act as a uh, data processing circuits what are the different examples of the data processing circuit so some of the examples are like uh, uh, if you see suppose i have 10 number of inputs or 8 number of inputs okay and at a time i want to select any one of the inputs okay because see let us assume i have eight channels and on eight channels uh, i want to select only one channel so if you see your tv in your tv there are n number of thousands of channels but at a time you can select only one channel right so what you do you are programming in such a way that only that channel is getting selected so you are controlling from somewhere if you have a given some key like let us assume i have a, a number of channels are let us assume 0 0 0 to 99 channels okay so if you are typing on your uh, remote like 10 what it means the 10th channel will be selected so what is the process uh, behind that remote and what what is happening there 
if you are pressing one zero that is converted into decimal form and that uh, uh, sorry in the in the binary form and then banner that binary form is utilized as a select input and that select input decides which of the channel i have to select that can be reflected to the display okay so this kind of concept we call it the multiplexing okay so we are, we have the n number of channels and out of that n number of channel based on the control based on the select line we can decide which of the channel need to be display on uh, 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 like which of the channel i need to see on the tv okay so this kind of uh, circuitry are required similarly the opposite kind of concept is also possible suppose uh, you may have seen uh, uh, like if i have a single input and i want to display on the multiple output but only one output can see at a time okay so the simple example is like i have one input and i let us assume i have eight outputs and at a time i want to display that input to only one output okay not to not to all so what to do i had i must have some control signal that will decide at which output i need to display that input okay so this kind of uh, circuits are uh, uh, the data processing circuit okay so in this lecture we will uh, or in this uh, set of ppts we will try to discuss what are the different data processing circuits and how we can design those circuits okay and we will also see based on those data processing circuit how we can uh, design a different kind of circuits not only the data processing we can also design some arithmetical and logical uh, circuits as well as based uh, based on these data processing circuits so we'll try to see all these possibilities okay so hope the uh, the objective of this lecture is clear okay so let us try to see what are the different data processing circuits okay the first data processing circuit is the decoder circuit okay so the decoder is the first data processing circuit and what this uh, decoder do okay so if we talk about the decoder in the decoder we can have n number of inputs okay and the total number of outputs are 2 to the power n okay so how it works i will tell you so this is the first kind of circuit so this uh, the decoder like whatever the input you are providing based on that uh, uh, that those output is getting activated like uh, which of the output will be activated that is decided with with the help of this uh, decoder so suppose if i have n is equal to 2 so the total output will be 4 so the decoder output will be d0 d d1 d2 and d3 and uh, based on the combination like 0, 0, 2, 2, n is equal to 2 are there. So total possibilities are 4. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. In that case, uh, which of the, uh, like this will be activated, rest will be 0. Yeah, I will I will discuss it in real later on. So this is how the decoder circuit works, where we have n number of input and the 2 to the power n number of outputs. Okay. Next circuit is the encoder circuit. Okay, an encoder is opposite to the decoder. Here, if we have two to the power n number of inputs, in that case, you can convert, you can get the n number of outputs. Okay, what is the inside of these blocks? I will discuss it in more detail later on. Okay, so the encoder and decoders are complementary in nature, uh, and and uh, the inputs and outputs are like this. The third set of segment, like the, the, the circuit is a multiplexer, which I just told you a few, a few minutes back. Okay. The multiplexer can have the multiple output and I can have only uh, N control signal will be required to uh, control this much of input. I just told you, suppose I have eight number of channels. Okay. Eight channels are there. And if I have to select any one of the channel, so three control signal will be required. Okay. And suppose if i have a 0, 0, 0, so this first channel will be selected and that will be passed to the output if 0, 1, 0 is there then second signal will be uh, 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 like a third signal will be like selected yeah this this input will be selected and that will be transferred to this one so which of the input i need to transfer to the output uh, that is decided by the status of this control signal so this n is nothing but small n is the uh, this one is the control signal number of control signals Okay, and two to the power n is the number of inputs, 
and we'll have one output here okay so one output will be there and uh, accordingly you can get it uh, don't consider this one as a logic okay this is the number of output okay one output so let me write it here otherwise that will create a problem so one output is there okay similarly if you talk about the opposite case of the multiplexer we can have us another one where we will have one input okay and we will have a n control signal and based on that we can have 2 to the power n number of outputs so based on the control signal structure we can decide uh, where i need to transfer this input or at which of the output i need to transfer this output so this kind of circuit we call it the the multiplexer circuit okay so hope the basic concept is clear of, of, like basic concept of all these data processing circuits are clear okay so let us discuss one by one the first one is yeah so if let us consider if i know that if uh, n is the number of inputs so the total number of outputs are 2 to the power 1 uh, 2 to the power n so the minimum possibility that we can have n this is 1 okay and in this case i will get two number of output similarly if n is equal to 2 then i will get four number of output and so on okay so the outputs are always in the order of 2 to the power n okay so let us consider the smallest one and then we'll discuss our analysis for, we'll extend our analysis further with the bigger circuitry so the smallest decoder that is possible which can have one number of control signal and two outputs okay one control signal and two outputs okay so how it will look like uh, we will have one input let us assume that input is b naught and we can have a two outputs okay and those two outputs can be uh, like d0 and d1 okay and if i want to make the truth table then how it will look like there are two possibilities that b0 can have the b0 can have uh, the two states either 0 or 1. If 0 is there, what it means this first output should be high and rest other output should be 0. So, for 0, D0 should be high and D1 should be 0. And if B0 is equal to 1, then the second should be high and the first should be 0. Okay. So, this is the uh, truth table that we can make it. Now, if you see here, B0 can be written as D0 is nothing but this is is equal to B0 complement. Okay. B0 is nothing but this is the B0 complement. And if you talk about the D1, D1 is nothing but this is B0. Okay. So, can anyone tell me if I have to design this circuit, how many logic gates and which kind of logic gates are required? For this purpose, can anyone tell me? Sir, one. One. One inverter is needed, right? Simply, you have only one inverter because B0 is already present and you need one inverter circuit over here. Okay. So, here I will have. So, if I have the B0 and if I am complementing it, then I will get the D0. Okay. And if I am not complementing it, I will get the D1. And this is the module for one to two decoder. Okay, so this is the simple circuitry. Now, if I want to make it enable, suppose sometimes what happens, uh, if I want to make this encoder with the control or with the enable circuit, like see, if enable is not present, if I'm not enabling any of the decoder, then what will happen? If I will get input, definitely I will get some output. Okay, so the input and outputs are uncontrolled. Okay, because we cannot make the input floating because then either the logic could be 0 or it could be 1. Okay, and if the 0 or 1 is there, then it will always give some output. But if you don't want like this and you want to activate this decoder when you want, in that case, enable circuit play a major role. Okay, that can help you to enable, like when you want to use this decoder, you can enable it otherwise you can make it disable okay so for that purpose let us try to see how we can 
design one to two decoder with enable circuit okay so the circuit will look like yeah normally one to two decoder will be there but there will be one more, more additional uh, control element that we call it the enable okay so let us try to see important point to re remember is like if on the enable if the bubble is given over here sometimes you will see there are some bubble to enable like uh, like the diagram will be like this here we will have one input to output one enable circuit and bubble will be something like this so if bubble is given what it means it is the active low active low kind of uh, decoder and if bubble is not there it means it is the active high what it means it means that this decoder will be activated if enable is at logic high so we call it the active high okay so the, to activate this one high logic must be connected to the enable one but if we have the active low kind of thing like you have bubble so it means if you want to uh, activate this decoder you must uh, keep this enable at logic zero so this is how you can say active low kind of okay so let us first discuss what is active high and then uh, we'll extend our analysis for active low as well so as of now to understand these things let us consider the active high case okay now here we will have a two inputs now okay yes bubble means not gate yes perfect absolutely correct yeah so bubble means simply not gate so now let us try to see here suppose i have a two inputs uh, e and b not and two outputs d0 and uh, d1 okay suppose if this is active high okay so to make it enable what i need to do e i will keep e as a high okay if e is high in that case whatever the status of b not is like there are two possibilities for b not zero and one and if e is again one so what will happen if e is one then this b not will be uh, like that will that will decide which of the output should be high so the d not will be one and d one will be zero and here it will be zero it will be one and in opposite case if enable is equal to zero okay i think i should use opposite sense like because uh, zero we are giving before okay so zero one one yeah both is possible but i just wanted to make a good table okay so zero and one is possible so this is one this is zero this is zero and this is one okay but what happens if e is equal to zero and if e is equal to zero this decoder will not be enabled okay and whatever the status of b not is there it does not matter okay it does not matter the uh, the output will always be zero okay so output like all the outputs will be zero if it is not enabled so this is what the truth table is now can anyone tell me which kind of logic or which kind of gate can be considered as a enable basic logic gate will be required for this, this purpose what we want see here we want like uh, any one gate if it is one then it will transfer the input okay the same input will be transferred okay same input will be transferred and if it is zero then whatever the input we are providing it does not matter output should always be zero so which of the logic gate is required for this application yeah this is and what operation gate. we are ha huh? which one and gate yes absolutely correct so see here if you can see closely this truth table Uh, here we are seeing if enable is equal to zero, if enable is equal to zero, then whatever the input you will change, I need always zero. Okay, and if enable is equal to one, in that case, whatever the input I have, I need the same kind of output. So this is just like we have already studied these things. So the end gate will solve this purpose. This requirement will be can be done with the help of 
end gate okay so end gate will be required so let us see how the circuit will look like okay see here this is what we have already done it but if i want to include the enable kind of things so i need to add two end gates one end gate here and one end gate here and if enable is equal to one then uh, this will be activated right so this this both will be uh, activated and accordingly whatever the input i will be getting the d0 will be reflected okay so this is the circuit for the one to two decoder with enable circuit okay so the end gate will solve the enable kind of problem and this is how the module will look like now in other case suppose this decoder is the active low kind of okay so what will be the modification in this circuit can anyone tell me if i have a one to two decoder with active low enable okay so what modification i need to do in this circuit so adding an end gate not gate so not gate where i will connect no, before uh, passing e in the circuit okay so you are saying like we will have one not gate over here right yes sir yes absolutely correct okay so if i want to make the logic uh, active low enable uh, decoder in that case i need to use one uh, inverter just passing this enable signal okay so this is how it works now let us try to consider some bigger circuitry okay uh, let us consider two to four decoder with enable circuitry okay so yeah these all are same like it's not that much difficult so you can do it but yeah let me to make you more comfortable uh we can have something like this suppose i have a inputs b0 and b1 and i am considering here the active low kind of enable okay active low is considered and uh, in this case i will have four output possible possible outputs d0 to d3 okay now if i want to make the truth table of all these things so how we can make that one okay so so we know that this will be activated if e is equal to zero okay so if e is equal to zero then that, that will be activated so i need to make zero oh, yeah let me change the color zero and uh, yeah there are two possibilities uh, four possibilities 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 okay and if all are 0 then d1 will be high and all other will be 0 in this case uh, sorry d0 and in this case d1 will be high and yeah 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 1 yeah so this will be the output now if e is equal to 1 so whatever the condition of input is there it does not matter output will always be zero okay so this is how it works so similarly uh, we need and gate okay and uh, to make this circuit so something like this suppose i have a b1 okay i can have a b complement okay so if we can see here i need here b bar uh, b1 bar and b0 bar here i need b1 bar and b0 here I need B1 and B0 bar, and here I need B1 and B0. Okay, so I need the complement and its original form. So I, let us assume I have a B1 and B1 complement line. I have B0 and the B0 complement line, and I have let us assume I have an enable signal. Here in the enable signal, I need to use one inverter because I have an active low kind of circuit here. Okay, and if it is active low, then I need to use one inverter for for the enabling the things okay so we are ready with all these signals now, so now now let us try to see how to pass the logics okay to pass the logic yeah definitely we need enable should be high yeah so one of the input for the end gate yeah we know that end gate is sufficient to pass these things okay uh, to to make it enable so end gate that will be controlled with this one so if it will be zero then here i will get one so one of the input will be one now i need b not and uh, b1 not and b0 not so i have connected b1 not and the b0 not okay so here what i will get i will get simply d not similarly if i have to make the 
b1 uh, uh, high so uh, 0 1 like b1 bar and the b0 should be connected so b1 bar and b0 should be connected here so this is what i have done it and similarly for d2 and d3 and this is how the 2 to 4 decoder will look like okay so this is how you can design the circuits